What a weekend. In today's video, we're going to show some progress on the bank behind where the tunnel will be going. A little bit of tractor work for using up more of that gravel. Uh, and some things that we had going on in our little hoop, um, the DIY hoop house, including potting up some bacopa seedlings, um, or, or really plugs. Um, and we also worked on the cut flower bed and planted more onions. So uh, might be a little bit of a longer video as we go through all the different things, um, but that should show you guys pretty good uh, good amount uh, happened this weekend and hopefully uh, you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions as always leave comments below and um, feel free to reach out on Facebook or Instagram as well. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. We're here in North Central Mass, Flicker Hill Homestead. Um, I gotta take a post out it looks like. Up this bank. Okay. Yeah. Go that right. So, that yeah. And right. And it ends up being a little bit of a retainer wall to hold some of that stuff. Um, but I can't get around with the buggy. I can't get around because of the all the pipes and the compost pile over there. And then on this side, we got the marker of the greenhouse back. It's right in the middle of where I would drive. Yeah, and it's. I can park right at the marker. Yeah. Okay. All right, and you're just gonna grab this, that back one. Okay. Yeah. And then drag it this way across. All right. We still really should think about taking. Unfortunately, no, I know it's right, it's really dead. Forward, so Jay's got the winch on the buggy, it's only 50 feet. You're almost there. Oh, I'm, I was way off. Well, can we um, drag it up with the tractor a little bit closer? He's trying to see if he has more chain and stuff, but he's got this log here, this tree that fell down. He cut off. You can kind of see it down there. Let me zoom in for you guys. He's got the chain hanging down here. And he was trying to hook that to the winch so we could pull it um, between the um, these trees come kind of up the bank here. I'm going to zoom back out. Um, pull it up this really big bank because we're trying to add more fill to this bank to make it not as steep um, and extend it a little bit and we're going to actually use these little saplings they're like four or five inches maybe six or so diameter um, and then this big tree here we're going to put these tree logs here and then put some fill and then do more tree logs they will compost into the bank which is absolutely fine But um, it looks like we're still a little, still a little short here, huh? So um, we still have my dad's buggy because there's still too much snow up north. Uh, so we got the Can-Am up here, brand new. Uh, he bought it this past winter and we've been able to enjoy it here um, down here in Massachusetts, which has been great for us. Um, and Jay's got the tractor down um, in the woods, this is a start, you can kind of see there's a start of a trail here um, with our big tool rack on the back. It's a 3046R John Deere. And um, the good thing about that tool rack is it has a big storage capacity. So Jay was able to load it up with the chainsaw and all the tools. We've got um, rakes and shovels and all sorts of different gadgets in there. And then the, um, he had a lot of rope and cable, as you can tell. Uh, so that makes it a lot more uh, easy to carry versus trying to load the bucket full of all your tools. He'll be able to use the bucket if he needed it. So it looks like we're finally getting there.
What do you think? <laughs> it's all about problem solving when you're out in the woods. Um, granted, this is pretty close to the house, but we've got about 14 acres of woods here uh, on our property. Um, so uh, having uh, the different buggies and the different tools and all the different gadgets um, is kind of a necessity when you're taking care of this much property. There's actually, I have a trail cam down on this back tree over here um, that I need to check. So maybe I'll go do that after we finish what we're doing here. Let's see if this works. This was my dad's idea actually to put some logs across here um, and try to help build up this bank a little bit better. I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I already turned that. To lock. Yeah, I'll figure it out. All right, so Jay said I had to turn. So I turned this thing. This is me figuring out how to use this fancy one um, to unlock. So now I need to turn it back to lock. So that should be engaged side here. This is a Can-Am 4500S, looks like. Um, and I was surprised this is actually rope, it's not cable. <laughs> so I don't know what I expected. Those suicide doors, I, I'm not a big fan of these things. Huh? Okay, um, he's telling me to put the parking brake on, and also there's buttons on the dash. I'm guessing it's this one, <laughs> um, but this is going to be fun. I'm going to figure this out, and I'll check in back soon. This is the part where we say don't not do this at home. I don't even think he's wearing his safety goggles. Oh, he is. He's wearing safety glasses at least. So the log is a bit stuck on some small little saplings. for that log to get out of the way. I will say today is the first day of black flies. <laughs> They're everywhere right now. Jace is down the hill, just cut the saplings are out of the way. I uh, dug in really good. Okay. Um, where I'm sitting, I can't see a thing. But up here, it looks like it, you can see some stuff from the camera. So I'm still in the buggy. Um, in order to loosen up the cable, I did have to turn it back on again and loosen that up. Um, I did switch to um, mud since we're in sandy stuff. It's really wet. I was thinking maybe that would help. Um, and I did do the front diff lock as well. Um, I did not try the rear diff lock, so I'm wondering if I could try that and that would help. Um, but he's resetting, I think, the cables. Um, 
on there. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing down there, um, but I'm gonna stay in here and make sure that this buggy doesn't uh, roll down the bank. Um, and uh, we'll update you guys hopefully in a little bit with uh, how it's going. There's Jay with the tractor. I like driving the tractor a lot more because we got a lot more hours on it. I'm more comfortable with it. But this Can-Am is pretty pretty good to ride. Um, I've been talking about wanting a side by side for quite a while, so it's kind of fun to have have my dad's here. Uh, that tractor is. Uh, I think we're at like 216, 218 hours now. Um, on that 34.6R and it does pretty well. Uh, I would say if we were to ever change anything, we would want the next size up. Um, lift capacity has been the main blocker with that tractor. Uh, everything else is, has been fantastic for our homestead size. We got 17 acres, like I said, but most of the stuff we're doing is not huge stuff. Um, but we do have to move some rocks. We gotta move some, you know, logs lifting the some of these heavier logs for the mill uh, that lift extra lift capacity would be helpful and then the IBC totes full of water when if we do rain catching systems um, that extra lift capacity would be very very helpful all right so we're resetting the winch now we'll pull the buggy back forward again you can see we made some progress now the logs up here We should be able to go direct to the cable now and cut out the middle. So the chain here, we should be able to go right to the winch cable from there and take the yellow rope out. Um, and then we'll move the buggy back up a little bit. Yeah, we gotta get it out of that dirt. Yeah, we should be having like Bluetooth or something because I can't hear you at all. It looks actually not a bad path. I really wish I could angle better up, up on this side. But it, should, it looks like it might work. Be careful, please. That's it, yep. Okay. All right, I'm reset. Jay's at the connection. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna turn. Huh? Okay. Oh, on the front? Okay, let me check. Are you in a good spot? If that breaks, wanna be in a bad spot? Well, we got some stuff done this afternoon. Last onion bed over, uh, closest to us on that far bed, that um, is ready for planting. So I may come back out after dinner and do some planting. Um, we got a nice big load of compost from Hubbard's farm down in Sterling. It seems to be the best quality we can find around. So if you're looking in this area, I highly recommend it. We got the cut flower beds mostly cleaned up and I still need a little, a little more weeding. 
and for the most part I was able to save the larkspur that had self-seeded that was in this section so I need to plant those in the morning um, they should be fine overnight and uh, then um, we're gonna actually pull up these tarps the, or the fabric and put new compost down for all three beds we'll use the tractor for that um, and then I think what's gonna happen is that I think I'm gonna leave I'm still ch deciding so it may change but I'm gonna leave the middle row exposed so that I can do the four inch spacing for the lisianthus and in theory that entire center row should be lisianthus well, lizzies are a pain in the butt um, they have a lot of uh, Forsarium wilt issues, um, disease prone, right? There's, there's a reason that the a single stem is like a five, six dollar retail. Um, so with that though, one stem also has, you know, five or six flower buds on it. And um, last year we had customers tell us that they lasted over three weeks long. So uh, base life is incredibly good and they're gorgeous. Um, so my goal is to plant this entire row in the center here and then we will still need to um, then put the tarp or the, or the fabric back down on the far row and the close row here um, when we pull them up then we'll be able to get a little bit more of those dandelions and weeds um, cleaned up before we're putting fresh compost down um, we're probably going to move some of the ranunculus around on crates tomorrow so that we can get the tractor closer um, we don't like to drive on that back side it's uh, a little bit more mushy still also so um, we'll do kind of along the side here on this edge and then along the side there to try to get the compost where we needed whereas this row we'll be able to just dump right on and it'll go really really fast similar to working down in that that garden the far garden um, open space is actually much drier so if we don't get too much rain tonight. My goal is to be out there also um, cleaning up the rocks and everything and prepping that. And we'll probably put some black fabric down in preparation for all the squash um, and to make it so it doesn't overgrow with weeds now that it is dried out. And so that's on the list. I need to fertilize a lot of things. Onions, garlic, ranunculus, the entire ranunculus tunnel uh, <laughs> needs to be fertilized. All of that will happen hopefully um, tomorrow morning if I can get get moving and, and get that done. It's supposed to be um, cloudy and a little rainy in the morning and then clear off so it's actually a perfect day to fertilize. Let all those nutrients soak into those leaves. We'll do a, a liquid fertilizer. Um, so I will go over that tomorrow. I was able to put a little extra compost up and around the perennial beds. Um, over by the asparagus area and things like that. So I'm also going to try to plant some seeds. I'm really late doing a lot of the extra cuts, so I'm going to do some direct seeding more so than I typically have done in the last few years. So that's what we did over there. We still have a bed here that we need to figure out where we're going to put it because I think we've decided against putting it back here. Um, you can see here, these three beds are now planted with onions around the borders and radishes in the center, they will become pepper beds. So uh, the radishes are the same as the other variety, which is Easter egg uh, from Johnny Seeds. And they are in uh, three to three to like 21 to 28 day um, DTM, so days to maturity. And so these are earmarked for local food works, which is exciting. This bed is now all full and ready, and this one will be planted out with our Lysianthus plugs, which was the video that I just posted, so um, you can kind of see them on the table in the, in the tunnel. Um, that's what's going on there. I need to post about all these uh, violas this weekend too. It's Earth, Earth Day weekend, right? So um, the goal is to try to sell some of those this weekend. We'll see if that happens. Over here, the radishes are doing really, really well. It turned out that when I stopped seeding and I came back, I missed this little section right here. So I just added some more seeds to that section. And Jace was able to fix the end panel like nothing ever happened. Um, so that looks much, much better now. Over here, 
you can see our compost pile, or we've got gravel, like three different types of gravel piles, or four gravel piles maybe. Um, and we've got like the filler um, hugo culture stuff with all the logs mixed in over in that bed as well. So um, piles are everywhere at the moment. This bed is planted with all radishes. Over here, this was a potato bed. I did, um, I had the compost right here with Jay's, had the bucket right over it. So I threw some extra compost on here. This was the 17 potatoes that we planted here. I do need to do some more grow bags this weekend, hopefully with potatoes. So that's on the list. Um, and uh, those don't need to be in the tunnel at this point. Potatoes can be out. So um, kind of just probably put them somewhere over there and kind of set them and forget them a little bit for a little while. And then we'll we'll try to get them into the watering schedule once, uh, maybe in another two weeks or so, once we're um, having the hoses out a little bit more. I did put a little bit of radish seed around the border. Um, because they're three to four weeks, the potatoes are planted down the center. We should be good there. Spinach and lettuce is here. It is really dry on that topsoil. So I um, am hoping the rain helps today. If we don't get a uh, or tonight, if we don't get a lot of rain, I will come in and water that in the morning. And over here, onions we've got um, going. These will be second year, so these will all flower this year. Um, and then over here, I've got radishes. I've got some of the baby kale still growing really, really slowly. And then some more radishes over here where Jay actually dumped some soil, so I do have some cleanup there. Over here, um, we need to finish cleaning up this bed. This half over here is actually already planted with carrots from last week. Um, and I need to actually get watering this really consistently. Carrots need a lot of water when they're starting to germinate. And then on that side, I need to plant the rest of the carrots, but you can see I actually need to clean up the tools out of there and then and the status plant, <laughs> the leftovers from last year, and then weed it. Um, I may actually just dig up that top soil because that's really, really weedy, and then put new compost in to fill that back up and plant with the rest of the carrots. Um, most of the carrots are like 65 day, if I didn't mention that. And actually some of the potatoes, we will start digging at about 60, 65 days. Um, when they have flowers, you can actually dig around the plant without pulling the whole plant out and grab some of the bigger ones, which will be little babies for us. They have an amazing, amazing flavor um, called new potatoes. I still need to clean up my spinach, but you can see here, I can start pulling leaves from the center. I just need to break off all of these, these leaves and compost them. Um, interesting thing about spinach is if, um, when you're still pretty cold out, let me see if I can see it in an example. If you get little white specks on them, that aren't bugs, <laughs> which is preface that, um, it's just because it's still cold. I think it's actually probably been too warm now for, for it, but um, it's not an issue at all. It looks kind of hairy almost, and basically that's exactly what it is. Um, so there's that. I'll go in and make dinner if I can get Jay to stop for a minute, but um, <laughs> he's worked a lot on the bank, and we actually pulled up one of the downed trees, so I will put some footage of that earlier. It's a little interesting when I came out here to, to check on him. He had me helping for a few minutes. Um, but this long log here, this was my dad's idea, um, and Jay was able to get that all set up. So he's still working on building this up, and he wants to then also put some bank run um, uh, fill, gravel, um, over to try to build that bank up so it's not so bad. <laughs> he's having fun. <laughs> Um, made a great great face there um, so um, we're gonna put some um, beams here probably pressure treated to build this up so it will be a step up but that will make it so that we don't have to worry about the um, gardens being on a different level and having to remove all of these gardens which would be even more work um, that we don't want to take on and a step here will be fine it will um, see if we end up doing a ramp so that we can still drive the tractor around behind the tunnel. Not sure yet, but this, uh, this grade was much bigger than we thought. Perception is really interesting. Um, so, uh, or perspective. Um, but this was about three, three feet off 
from that that side and everything we've read and been told by others getting your tunnel location perfectly flat and level is really really important um, that it is level so we're doing all this work you know this was a, a little more of a surprise a little more of um, a grade change than we expected but thankfully we've got our tractor to do that See that log is just playing like a catch there. This is what you want to see when you're mixing your fertilizer. You want it to be active and healthy and so when you start mixing it up um, in the bucket you'll start to see um, lots of bubbles and I mean basically the yeast is is reacting in this one. Um, I just made a little bit of a mixture of, of stuff to put on the ranunculus. Um, it's a uh, yeah, well, I'll go through what I'm doing, and um, uh, I am not uh, an expert. Oh my goodness, sorry. We're gonna get distracted here for a second. Look who's trying to sneak up on me. Um, hopefully he doesn't chase me. That would be really, really bad. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, so, but I did wanna show, like you want it to be active. Um, the other big thing about fertilizing mixing is you need to plan it so that you can wait the 20 minutes or so before you're actually going to pour it on. Um, I don't know why they don't actually show that on instructions, but that's really, really important. Um, now there's a robin pulling worms out of my, uh, my beds up there, um, as usual. All right, so for the ranunculus, I'm using a Omri... Um, it's, you know, organic rated, uh, fertilizer, Fox Farm, liquid plant food, big bloom. You can see the NPK numbers, right? Um, this means it's got zero nitrogen. So nitrogen's for like the greens, like growing really strong, healthy, um, leaves, that type of, uh, some stem strength as well in there. Um, but basically, uh, the other stuff has some N, but because I'm going to try to move towards the <laughs> this turkey's really distracting. Um, it's not going to move towards the um, bloom cycle of the ranunculus. I want to go to this. So this is a combination of earth ca castings and bat guana. Um, there's so many options out there. Um, I always recommend going with a reputable brand, or you know, talk to the other people near you and see what works for them, because of our climates are so different. Um, but that's uh that's what i'm starting with that's probably a large majority of of <laughs> the largest portion in this little um mini two and a half gallon bucket um this next one is an aea product uh they are expensive i'm gonna start with that um but this is what uh rejuvenate this is what i call my uh magic wand um if you guys heard me talk about it last year this stuff <laughs> from what i I've heard um, from some people who use it often, um, but also from my experience, you can't use too much almost on, on this stuff. And this one, um, you can do foliar spray, you can pour it right over top of the plant roots, um, lots of options there. Uh, so the main th components of this um, bucket are the Fox Farm Liquid Plant Food Big Bloom Concentrate and the Rejuvenate. I've also added in, this was something I tried last year, on the Micro 5000. One of the reasons you want to do a premix 
um, and let it sit is to make these kind of more active. You can mix it in with your fertilizers. Um, and you can see apply in 10 to 20 gallons of water per acre. Um, so um, you don't need much of this. Um, and then liquid humate is another one I added in last year that I hadn't really been using. Another one to get things um, added. This is the organic Neptune's harvest. Um, let's see, move over here. Um, small doses, this, this is just like a little blip in that bucket because it's a really small bucket. Um, and um, I usually just put this in with most of my fertilizers. Um, uh, seems to be seem to be helpful and then I added a little bit of nitrogen in, and even though the rejuvenate has I think has some nitrogen um, this is a 231 deficiency weed fertilizer um, because technically they're not all budded yet um, so I wanted to push them with the buds but also still make sure they have a hardy green um, and since I might have some leftovers the ranunculus that are out in the crates are yellowing a little bit so I want to make sure that I'm getting that nitrogen in there so um, I'm probably going to just pour this today, but I did want to, um, right over the top of the plant, um, but I did want to show you, these come in all different sizes. I highly recommend getting a real one that's going to last you multiple seasons. And um, most of them we actually do use Sharpie and write on which type of fertilizing um, we put in them. But I also really love this bucket size. And a lot of times I'll mix in the big five gallon bucket and then pour into this and then use this to to walk around um, uh, and just pour right over the plants. To show you what, what I'm using, a lot of, uh, usually I wouldn't use all of these products all at once. Uh, a lot of times I'll do just the uh, fish and seaweed, liquid humate, and micro 5000. So big takeaways are play around with it, see what works. So there's some key things that you can play with there. Again, um, <laughs> do your research, read all the labels, understand what, you, what you're trying to do. And uh, a lot of the hydroponic stores actually have a lot of these products, um, as well as some of the local ag stores are now starting to carry them. So uh, go and check them out, see what, see what you can do. But just make sure that you actually do let your fertilizer and water really mix up and, um, and sit for about 20 minutes before you start using it. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, I'm gonna get to work and hopefully not get chased by, by this monster turkey. Um, we have about 20 it's usually in the yard, so thankfully he's headed that way. Um, so I will uh, update you guys in a little bit. Jay's helping me pull up the tarp. As you can see here. <laughs> yep, that's the new bed. So these two beds, uh, this would be their third year, and that one is, um, it'll be a second year. And we need to add some compost on top of this, but you can see the cardboard here, still down, sorry. I gotta pull some weeds quick before we get started on, with the tractor and get some compost over here. We're probably gonna have to move some of the ranunculus. But we cleaned up the beds yesterday, or the other day, I guess it was, I don't even know what day it was. And uh, we're pull Jay's pulling up the stakes now. The middle bed, I think the plan will be to leave the tarp off so that we can plant the ranunculus a whole lot closer together than the holes. Otherwise, the holes will be a little far apart to hold them, have each, like, each of them hold it up. And also we want the longer stem length so by planting them a lot closer you do end up uh, overcrowding them on purpose um, for cut flowers
take an hour and a half. That bed did get pretty big. <laughs> oh yeah. It's gonna be uh, nice and full of Lizzie's. By doing that, we ended up expanding the bed out so it covers over the two things. So I'm gonna have much skinnier walkways this time around. Um, maybe what I'll do to help is maybe I'll put a couple boards, like boardwalks, to help so I can um, reach a little bit better uh, in certain spots, um, maybe between colors or something. So I'll see how that works out. But that was a, a good little quick, quick thing. I wouldn't say really quick, but quick enough with our tractor uh, being a huge, huge help on that one. Uh, and so now we'll be able to plant that tomorrow uh, and then I can also start planting seeds um, for some of the flowers on this side and that back side. Did a little bit of a small burn pile today. We finally got rid of that big brush pile and mill scraps and everything. Um, for here, where we are in North Central Bass and, and Gardner, we're not able to have burn permits after April. So uh, <laughs> this was a kind of a last minute thing. Uh, Jay got pulled the permit um, for and just doing a lot of cleanup, a lot of uh, scrap wood still have a pile, a little small pile over here left. So we still didn't do much more with these tomatoes that are out here, um, but they actually started to bud. Um, so I really do need to get them planted. I'll probably pick off those very quickly. The ranunculus um, is still budded up. These buds do seem much smaller. Um, so we'll see uh, from last year's uh, ranunculus. So this front part here, you can see it's a little more scarce. Um, we'll see how they go. I did fertilize in here and um, I'm hopeful, but um, really more importantly, I'm excited about um, all of these back ranunculus here um, and the stuff outside. The Fever Few is doing really well also. So I'm excited to see if I can get some really nice long stems this year. Um, again, in here with second year Fever Few. And the Lizzie's, you can see I did not get to plant those, but I did plant the Bacopa. So that's the last of the purple here. Um, I did pot up uh, two purple trays and one white tray. That's all I have for, or maybe it was two white and one, one purple tray. Um, that's all I have left. Um, so it's not too bad because what I was able to do was get all these baskets planted. So these two were already planted pansies violas and ranunculus in the center um and then here you can see all the different bacopas so uh we're gonna see how these go you don't want to get bacopa real real dry that one wouldn't, wouldn't be good um and then i also potted up the two strawberry um pots here uh that i had just sitting in a pot so um yeah still have a lot of work hopefully It'll be good for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 